Hi, I'm Andy Schertz, a product manager here at Epson for the, our ColorWorks line of printers. And today I'll be unboxing a C6000 series to kind of take us through how to get it ready, how to get it set up, give us some tips to make sure that our installation runs smooth. The first thing is to make sure that we got the right C6000. And remember that for each one we have matte and gloss. The matte media uh, models will look a blacker on matte, but cannot really print well on gloss. The gloss will print on everything, uh, but doesn't look as dark black on matte. So the way this is configured is every printer is ships and is configured identically, but the black is left off until you pick which one you want. So if you order matte, we're going to stuff that through the stocky door. So you can see that this is where the printer will be configured with either a matte black or a gloss black cartridge in this spot. If you order a gloss, there'll be a gloss cartridge in this doggy door. So the black we have to watch out for when we install and make sure we're getting the right model. So the first step we're going to do is unbox our unit. Now this box is a reusable box and I know it looks tempting to rip the tape off the top but let's not do that. Instead there's these clips here down below which will just undo like here and once these things clips are removed you can easily lift the top straight off the printer. And there we go we can remove these corner supports. Four of them. And now we have our printer ready to basically be taken out of the box and set up where we're going to go ahead and use it. You'll notice that the box has got some natural places under here where you can reach under and grab. Two people, and then maybe if you want, there's handles at the front, kind of handles at the back. I'll do this myself right now. One. And here we go. We have our printer out of the box. Now we're going to take it out of this plastic bag here. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to be looking for these blue pieces of tape. Everything that you're really supposed to be touching in this stage is going to be identified with a blue piece of tape. Take this all off. Again, there's another piece of material here protecting the top. Blue pieces of tape. Okay, get this off. And now we're going to see the printer has all kinds of little packaging materials around here, all identified with blue tape. So we're going to go through a few of these here. Undo our control panel tape. I'm going to undo this one up here. I'm going to undo this one right here. So when we go to pull these off, you can see that it's folded over here and there's a little flag on each piece. So you don't have to try to scrape off from this end. There's always an end with a flag that's easy to grab. And in fact, I'll go ahead and take this cover off for now. Put it out of my way. We now have several pieces back here and there's even some little foam shipping container pieces here that we will take off. This is going to let us take out the spindle. Take this out. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove. We've got another tape here. And there's one that's a little bit tricky to see in here, but again, everything has a flag associated with it. So you reach in here, pull this one off, and that takes that one out. And we've finished with the blue tape in the back here. Okay, so we still have a few more from the front. I'm going to go ahead and take this one off here, which will actually remove a small little shipping block out of here. Take that away. And I think we've done with our blue tape. So what we want to do now is we also have some packing material that's protecting the display. We can go ahead and take that off right now. One piece there and one piece there. And now our printer is fully unboxed. Okay, so now let's look what else we've got in here. I'm going to reach inside. I have a shipping uh, restraint and a sample roll of media that we have that comes with each printer. And let me go back to the box that we took off in the beginning here. So maybe we took the box off quickly, but you're going to see is the ink is actually up in here in the top. Okay. So we've got two different inks. Originally, our ink that determines whether it's matte or gloss would have been right here where the doggy door is, just on the inside of that, okay? So sometimes people grab the ink here and go, I'm missing the black. Make sure you're looking at it right here, the end, to get the black. Also within the printer is the power cord, which we'll be using, our USB cable, and just some small safety instructions for the printer, okay? Most of the documentation is actually available online, and that way it's always kept up to date. So the next step we're going to want to go ahead and do is we're going to want to plug in our printer and get it to run. I'm going to do my cord. 
So our power cord, very simply, universal cord, plugs in here. And our USB cable that we'll be using later to print from. For this test, we're going to go ahead and use the USB today. But we could have used the Ethernet. And this port here is our remote I.O. for interface to an automated applicator. So we're now ready to go ahead and put our initial set of consumables into the printer here. Now, you've seen the ink, but the question is, where's the maintenance box? The maintenance box is located in here, and it should ship with the printer in this place here. So you can just double check that it's there, but it will already be unpacked and installed, and it's ready to go as it is. So I took it out there to show it to you, but in reality, there's nothing you need to do that. It comes equipped, ready for usage. Now to load our ink, we're going to open up these bays here, okay, and we're going to go ahead and slip the ink in. Now, the ink can only go in one way, and also the ink can only go into its appropriate spot. So if I try to put the cyan into magenta, it's not going to go. So don't worry, you cannot misload the ink. It's all keyed. Let's get my magenta here. Okay, here's one more time to be a little bit careful. This is a matte black. I want this printer to be matte. I'm going to be demonstrating that today. Either black will fit in the slot. The matte black will or the gloss black will. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and install it. Power my printer up. Okay, now this is going to be an important step here, this next one. We've talked about the matte and the gloss. Okay, once you configure a printer, with matte ink, it is a matte printer, and it's stuck that way, and vice versa. If you configure it as a gloss printer, it's going to be a gloss printer. The printer is now, we've put the matte ink in here, okay? It's going to ask me one more time, what ink is this printer supposed to be? And I'm going to say, I want matte ink. It's now going to ask me, matte black is selected, okay? Pay attention to this step, okay? Make sure you do it right. Yes, I want to do it, okay? And now it's installed. I'm going to go ahead and do the initialization, okay? So this is the time where if you're thinking about taking a coffee break, it's probably time to do it. I'm going to go ahead. I'm certain I've got the right ink in here. I'm going to start the initialization, okay? Okay, so now we go ahead and we initiate the prime sequence. And at this point, we have to be patient, okay? I know we've just got our brand new printer, we're excited, we want to play with it, but really at this point, don't do anything. Don't open any of the covers, don't disturb it, don't uh, unplug it. It's really got to run its course. And why is this going to take so much time? Basically, the printer ships completely empty of ink. So although we have full cartridges in there, I've got to get that ink past pumps, into lines, all the way up to the printhead. And more importantly, I have to get all of the air out. So even if I kind of get ink up to the printhead position, if I still have air bubbles in there, I've got to keep moving ink through the mechanism, okay? Because any bubbles, air bubbles, will be missing dots when we go ahead and print. The printer actually can detect the air in the lines, can detect air in the printhead, so it will keep the priming process going until it really gets the system full of ink, okay? And that will be the process. It's going to take a significant amount of time. This is a good time to go ahead and take a break, come back, Try to leave the printer undisturbed during this process. Okay, so when we're done here, the printer's gonna let us know that it's completed. We've been, we were good, we didn't touch it through here. Go ahead and dismiss. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. And the next thing to do is the printer will come up in the ready state, and it's going to show us the level of ink in the printer after the install. This is probably one of the most common questions I get asked is somebody looks here and says, oh my gosh, I just bought this. And look how much uh, magenta, I have, I've, I've already less than half of my ink cartridges remaining. What happened? Were those little shorty cartridges or something? No. We ship with full ink cartridges, but the process of getting all the air bubbles out of the system, the only way to do it is pump and prime, pump and prime, pump and prime, until we come up without any bubbles. This is a phenomena that will only happen on the first set of ink cartridges. The next set will last massively longer. but. This is what we have to get through the first time to prime it. And that first maintenance box obviously took a fair amount of ink into it because as we were cycling ink through trying to get rid of those bubbles. So don't be alarmed when the first set looks like this. This is not indicative of the usage you're going to be getting out of your printer.
Okay, so now we've got our printers primed and ready to go. So the next step, obviously, is going to be put media in there. So let me talk a little bit about this. There's basically two different kinds of options. You can use fan fold coming out of the box, which is really good because a fan fold box can actually offer quite a lot of labels in a small space, uh, or rolls, okay? The printer is designed with a slot in the back here that the fan fold can go right into, okay? And we have many people that may have been using something like the C831, large labels feeding from a fan fold box, and uh, now they're gonna migrate to the 6000 series, which is great and we highly recommend it, okay? But let me give some caution about fan fold media, okay? So what will happen is, this is a pretty much a normal configuration. I set my printer on my table, I put my box right up on here, okay, I got space constraints, let's go. I'm gonna take this label now, I'm gonna feed it into the printer, and look what I've got going on here, okay? My label is coming up out of the box, it's going back down underneath here, then it's gonna go around here, and then all of a sudden we go, oh, I got a paper jam. And you say, my new printer is no good, I don't like it, blah, 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 I got real problems with this thing here. The problem is, you know, to make a beautiful looking label, I've gotta keep my tension and the label flowing smoothly, and if I've got some sort of convoluted paper path going on here, I'm gonna have real trouble, okay? Put the media down low and give it time to pull up and out of the box naturally into the printer. Now, for today, I'm gonna to go ahead and demonstrate. Instead of that, I'm gonna go ahead and use the roll alternative, which is also very, very popular, okay? So, I will take my roll media, okay? And to put the roll media, I will now use the carrier that comes with the printer. You can get extra one of these so that if you have two or three different label sizes, you can have them already preloaded on the spindle. And the way it works is like this. You simply grab these two blue uh, fingers here, squeeze them together, and off it comes. Load it on. Grabbing the blue items to make it, uh, let it on and off, and here we go. Now you have a cassette that you're ready to load in the printer. I can open it from the back, or I can open it from the front. Either way, I'll just go ahead and do this one right now. I grab my media, and it very simply drops in. It basically can only go in one direction, one way, and it's ready to go. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to have a step here where I will have to watch very carefully to make sure that my gap sensor is aligned. One of the advantages of the C6000 series is it has a movable gap sensor, okay? This just happens to be a square label, so it doesn't really matter where the gap sensor goes, but if I had a label that maybe had an odd shape and I need to make sure that I'm capturing right at the crest of that shape, I need to make sure that that gap sensor is adjusted at that point, okay? Secondly, and this can really drive you crazy if it happens, if these sensors, because it's a transmitter and a detector, if they get out of whack with one another, you're gonna find the printer can't find the gap because I'm shining my magical light and I can't see anything over here and I don't know what's going on. They have to be aligned, okay? I double check this printer here. You can see that this is not aligned with this. I have to make them sure. I either can move the bottom one over here to match or move the top one over to be in alignment like that. But these do have to be aligned for the gap sensor to work properly. Second thing is there is a platen release lever here that can be open or closed. When it is open, it basically unlocks a paper path. I can slide media through. I wanna make sure that's shut. So before we load the media, we have to make sure that this platen lever is pushed all the way down. Now, this is a common error because what will happen many times is I open it up, I pull my media out, I get my new media, I go to push it back in there, and this lever is still up. So we wanna make sure we lower this down before we attempt to load our media. There. Get my loose end. I will lay it in the path here, and I, by squeezing, again, everything that I'm supposed to touch will be blue, and by squeezing this blue adjustment here, I'm gonna adjust it. I don't want it to be scrunching the media, and I don't want a gap that it's sloppy. So just gently touching it, and then I just slide my media into the printer, and there you can see it took it, and my media is loaded correctly. Just push it into the printer. It will grab the media, and take it and load it, okay? Shut my cover, and now I'm ready to start basically configuring my first label print job and printing with the C6000. Just before we move on to setting up the printer and getting ready to actually uh, print a label, 
let's just see what happens if I don't do the media loading properly. And I'm going to talk about the most common symptoms. So I take my media, I put it into my printer here, I slide it in, you know, something doesn't quite seem to be right. I shut it. And all of a sudden, I will get the error uh, that the print media is not loaded properly. Okay. One of the most common problems with the media not being loaded properly is that I forgot to shut the platen uh, open lever. Okay. So this lever allows the media to be slid through the printer. Okay. And it goes into the print station. In fact, I can slide it all the way through the printer magically, right? Because it's not putting any resistance on there. But that's not how I'm supposed to load the media into the printer. And then I go, oh, I got this open. I forgot it. So I shut it real quickly. But okay, this is not what we're going to want to do. It's very easy because maybe I took the old roll out and I forgot to shut that afterwards. So what we have to do is if we do have any error setting it up, just go ahead. Let's close it. We got to want to get the printer out of the air state. So I'll close that patent lever by pushing it down. I shut the cover and just make sure I get back to my ready state where I see my ink levels and everything like this. This lets me know the printer has cleared all the air states and it's ready for me to do a second try. So I will go ahead and put it in now. I can now try it again. And there it is. It takes it and I've reloaded my media from an error state. Make sure that all the latches are shut, shut the cover again, and make sure it goes back to my ready state. When it's like this, I know I have no errors and it's ready now for me to load the media properly. If you do actually make a media loading error, just remember, back it back out, shut all the covers, get yourself back to the ink ready state and just do a second try. And with that, let's go ahead and install our driver and we'll start uh, getting ready to print a label job. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we're gonna go to the Epson website and we can look at either searching for the C6000 series under printers or support and basically get over here to the driver. The latest driver will always be up on the website. We're going to go ahead and download the, the driver. Once it's down, done downloading, we go ahead and click on it to install. Yes, we confirm. This is what we're trying to install. Decide if it's your default printer or not. Since it's my own laptop, I'm going to make it not my default printer. I hit OK. It's going to ask me the license agreement. I just agree to this. And I go ahead, of course, at this point, I could modify my language if necessary. OK. And now it's going to go ahead and install the driver for me. Now, at this point, the next step is it's going to go ahead and ask me, how am I going to connect this printer? And in this case, for this demonstration, I'm going to use the USB port. And I will make sure that I connect it. OK, so let's go ahead and plug in our USB cable. Ready to go. I will hit USB OK. It's now going to search for us. It's found it. OK, and now when it's complete, I can go ahead and hit OK. And we can go ahead and close our down our browser. And now we look at our printer and settings utilities. And there we see we have our C6000PU. OK, so let's go ahead and manage this thing here. And I'm going to go to Printing Preferences. Now, the first step in working with these printers, I always recommend when you're using your driver, is to double check that you see the ink levels here. This is the first sign that you're actually connected to a printer. It's possible maybe in a network setting or other settings that, or maybe you've installed it once and you've unplugged it and maybe now it's created a second instance or something like this. The way to make sure that you're actually talking to the printer that you intend to be doing is that you will actually see the ink levels. If you don't see the ink levels, there's something wrong with the connection and we need to do some troubleshooting there. Now, this is a very unique thing about the C6000 family here. So you see all kinds of settings for the printer in this screen. But actually, they're not accessible. And you're thinking, OK, I see that you're showing me settings, but why are they not accessible? This is the design philosophy of the 6000 series driver is that we're going to actually want to define print jobs and everything about that job. Okay. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to define a media. Okay. And in this case now I'm going to create a new media and I'm going to give it a meaningful name. So this is going to be called uh, install demo. Okay. Of course the 
the name could be something meaningful like this is my invoice printer or this is the loading dock number two or this is the special uh, repackaging label. The idea is that you will make a label definition and we're going to define everything about it. Okay, so we're going to define the size. Okay, in this case it's going to be four by six. Okay, the gap between labels, we normally don't have to touch that. Okay, so you're going to see that we have all of our settings here. So the first thing is we're going to have to decide what type of gap detection we want. And in this case here, we're going to go ahead and use a uh, die cut gap, but we could have used black mark or continuous, whatever like that. Okay, the type of paper, of course, is it matte paper? Is it synthetic paper? The main thing here is to pick the type of paper. This actually determines how it's going to lay down the ink because maybe a glossy media will need media, uh, uh, will lay down uh, a little bit less ink because it's glossy and a little bit different to make the colors come out. Of course, if I try one and I like the result, there's no problem. It's not going to harm anything on here. But generally, I'm going to start with the default, which is the, uh, which is the matte paper for this particular demonstration. Now, print quality. The printer has various uh, trade-offs between speed and print quality. And basically, what it will do is determine how many passes it makes. We have max speed, speed, normal. Generally speaking, normal should be actually the highest print quality you really ever need. That's very, very high quality, great speed, and normally we would need it there. But if this is just a, a label that is really only for information purposes in a warehouse, perhaps max speed is appropriate. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and pick that for right now. Uh, there's higher quality modes. Normally you will not ever have to do this. We also have a lot of color corrections and color optimizations that we could get into. I won't necessarily do those today. We, that's fought, fodder for a little more of an advanced setup. Okay, and when I get this all done here, how am I going to, this happens to be a peeler model, so it's asking me, is this going to be manual apply or automated apply, or maybe don't even use the peeler at all. I'll just go ahead and leave that at manual apply. Okay, at that point, I can hit OK, and I have now have a new defined media here, which is my initial uh, item here. Now, I could actually make one very, very close to this. So, for example, I could edit this. I could create a slightly new name, make slightly tweaks, and save this. The idea is to define all your different print jobs. So, don't think of it as just the media, like I'm using 4x6 mat. Think about it as being all the attributes of that individual print job. And from here, now that I'm ready to go, I am done. And I can go ahead and now I can print a label. Okay, so we'll go ahead and find a label that we want to print here. Open it up. Okay, we're going to go to File, Print. Obviously, we're going to go ahead and pick our printer that we've just defined, which is the PU model here. Now, this is where a lot of times people will get a little bit, uh, you know, messed up here, is that you're going to sit, let me uh, go a stab slower here. Let's go to double check the properties before we print here because we've just defined a print job and you see that's not the media, that's not the job I've selected. The job I selected, just designed was my initial demo, right? So make sure you select the right media. In color labels, uh, of course, uh, the media and the entire job definition is critical. This now sets all the parameters of the job, not just the four by six. And with that, we're ready to go ahead and print our label. And let's print a beautiful label with our brand new installed printer. And then we have a label peeled and ready to print on our C6000 that we just installed. Okay, so now you've seen we've got labels printing out of our C6000 printer. I hope we showed you how to get it all the way from your box, get it set up, get it ready to go. And uh, it's quite easy. And refer back to this video if you have questions in the future. And I thank you for watching today.